In this video, we're testing the compatibility of three Time War products together with the April Brewer. Welcome. My name is Patrick Rolf and this is Coffee with April. For this episode, we're kind of back to some of the things we used to do a lot on this channel and it's to actually try different products because as we develop our own products here at April, we're always very curious to see how different products from different brands are actually working together with the April Brewer, right? And as you guys know by now, we are working on our own hand grinder set to launch or be displayed for the first time in April of 2025. So that's still in the future, but it's coming. Uh, and a big part of that process is again, us testing a lot of different equipment to see uh, what works and what doesn't work. Where do we get inspired? What can we improve? Uh, and how can we make coffee taste better, right? So at the moment here, we're actually then testing three different products from Timor, more or less, or Time More. Um, water kettle, scale, and one of the latest grinders, I believe, Chestnut C3, uh, has a S2C steel burst, 38 millimeters. Um, kind of interesting, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through a little bit in terms of how I use each of them uh, and brew some coffee at the same time, right? So the coffee that we're using today is gonna be a washed processed geisha varietal from our partner producer, El Socorro, in Guatemala. So one of our kind of favorite coffees. Uh, starting to rinse the paper filter as we always do, hold down the paper filter gently with your hands and just pour some water in the middle to let that set properly. It's gonna help a lot for uniformity, right? Now let's maybe talk a little bit about the kettle first. So pretty straightforward, it's a water kettle, right? Uh, it's gonna heat up, it has no clear kind of flow restriction. So it's gonna pour a little bit faster when I'm brewing, that's something to consider. I'm myself kind of used to, or I've been brewing so much with the fellow kettles now that has a restricted flow. So it's a little bit of, of adaptation to do there, but it works pretty fine. Uh, apart from that, pretty intuitive and easy to use. You have a little scale thing here where you're gonna slide up and down to adjust that temperature, which is a little bit different, but it takes you know two, three times and then you're completely used to it. So I don't think it really matters so much. Uh, overall, kind of a small kettle, a 600 mils. Uh, which I guess makes it lighter and easier to use, perhaps. Uh, the scale, kind of interesting, and we're gonna get back to that later because it has a bunch of different features. Uh, the grinder itself, there are a few things that make sense uh, to kind of mention, I think, a bit more in detail. Uh, first of all, it's a grinder that actually has the dial on the outside. And as some of you guys know that when it comes to hand grinders, I really prefer. Uh, this is kind of easy, intuitive, it has a little bit of a breakdown underneath showing where they want to be quite size wise. Now for this recipe, we're going to do a kind of a classic 12 gram, 12 grams of coffee to 200 grams of water. And they recommend here that for example, let's see, pour over is between five and eight. Uh, when we've done test brews, we're ending up somewhere around seven. Uh, seven to get a strength that is around let's say 1.25, 1.3, which is usually our target, right? Now, one thing I do wanna say about this grinder is that this dial here, even though it's really nice to see, it feels like it's moving a bit too easy sometimes. Uh, so I find myself kind of double checking that grind size to make sure that it's correct. Now, another thing with a grinder that I actually really appreciate is the fact that it's a very strong build. So it feels like very robust, every single part. Uh, easy little container underneath, which is very kind of easy and straightforward to use. Uh, so in general, very easy to grind. Everything works really smooth. Now, back to that kind of scale. So. We've seen a lot of different scales on the market in general. Um, a lot of them kind of comes out as some kind of a Kaya adaptation. Uh, this I think is a little bit more, let's say new and refreshing. And I think one of the things that is really interesting with it, and it's a thing that I've seen a lot, especially when I've done the homebrew videos in Asia, is that you're able to separate 
both the, the beverage weight and the amount of water you're pouring on the coffee, right? So you can actually measure, this is the amount of actual brewed coffee I have in the server, in the mug, or in the cup, or whatever you brew into, versus then this is the amount of water that I actually pour on the coffee. And I would say in general, this is very educational because different roast degrees is gonna absorb a different amount of water, right? So basically, if you work with a very wide range of different roast profiles, you're actually gonna have a different amount of liquid and the different amount of liquid is then gonna change the calculation for your total extraction, right? So if you, for example, brew a bunch of different coffees and you use an average beverage weight for your calculation of total extraction, you're actually gonna be quite wrong. So you wanna be able to be on top of that. From a competition perspective as well, for those of you that compete, it's actually really helpful to see the beverage weight because you're gonna be surprised over how often that beverage weight is actually not correct uh, when you're brewing three at the same time. So what I'm doing here is a simple 100 gram pour. Also quite cool is that I can actually see the flow rate. So it shows me in kind of live form or live format, the amount of grams per second that I'm pouring on the coffee, right? Now, granted, it's a lot of different kind of uh, numbers to keep track on here at the same time. So it, it's a little bit confusing initially, but again, after you used it a few times, it's quite simple. Second pour at 35 seconds. And because we have no restricted flow rate, I'm actually pouring a lot faster here. So we are about 12 to 15 grams per second, whereas most of our usual kind of recommended recipes are down at 10, which is again, very much based on the fellow kettle with the restricted flow that actually makes it harder to pour really fast, right? So this kettle, you have to focus a little bit more in terms of being accurate. Obviously, when you don't have a flow restriction, you're also able to agitate a lot more. And that's also gonna change the quality that comes out of the coffee and that can be both positive and negative. So it's just something that you have to consider when you are brewing. Now we're gonna let this pour go down, do some tasting and then come back to you with a little bit of a summary of what we just did. So we're back, we tasted the coffee and we have a little bit of a summary for you here. So long story short, um, all three kind of devices seem to work pretty well, right? Uh, I think as always, when we're looking at new equipment, it's all about how do we integrate that properly with the APA brewers and the style of brewing that we do, right? Uh, so with this grinder now, working with an average um, dose of about 12 grams, I would say again, we start at seven, maybe work up towards eight in terms of grind size. Uh, that seems to be where we get the best result. Now, one of the things we can see is that we're definitely getting a bit of, let's say, a richer mouthfeel on a range of TDSs. Uh, but we maybe don't get the same flavor quality or clarity that we used to. Uh, if you follow what I do, you've seen that I'm a big fan of, for example, the Timor Sculpture 078 grinder. That's one of our kind of go-to grinders in the office here at April. And I would say that, for example, provides a significantly better cup of coffee than this version of the grinder does, right? Uh, apart from that, again, um, the water kettle is a water kettle. You know, there, it's kind of hard to make something that stands out or distinguish itself as being much better than another water kettle. Um, again, doesn't have a restricted flow, which is nice if you wanna pour fast, not as nice if you wanna pour slow. So something to consider in general. Um, apart from that, it's kind of small, easy to use. I think the scale is really where it becomes interesting here. I really appreciate being able to see that beverage weight being able to see the grams per second in terms of flow rate. It's just two things that is very educational, I think especially for new baristas. It's helpful in kind of, let's say, a store environment as a good reference. Like, it's not just about the total amount of water you're pouring on the coffee, but it's also about the speed of that pour, right? Which is something that we always believe is very important here at April. Uh, but yeah, long story short, we get a really kind of well-balanced, good structure cup of coffee, maybe not with the flavor, quality, and clarity that we're looking for. Uh, we've been getting better results with the sculpture, but in general, a nice little setup to play around with for sure, and I myself would definitely work more with this scale in the future, I think. Now, uh, with that, we wanna thank you all for watching as per usual. I'm sure a lot of you have worked with these products or similar products before, so we'd be super kind of curious to hear what do you think? Is this something that you're using are you maybe using it in a different way than we are doing as well? 
uh, what is your flow rates and so on when you're pouring. So please make sure that you comment and share, like, subscribe, all of this. Uh, we are doing a little bit of a giveaway on Patreon as well of this setup, actually. So uh, if you haven't signed up for Patreon, make sure you do, and then you might actually get it. Um, with that, again, we just want to thank you all for subscribing, watching, and supporting this project, and wish you a good day. We want to give a special thank you to all of our Patreon supporters. It's because of you that we are able to continue to make these videos. And we want you all to feel free to always come with suggestions and ideas on the content that you want to see uh, because we are doing this for you and because of you. Thank you from all of us here at April.